sure that once they get into the promised land, these men who have listened to the complaints of people and helped settle uh, minimal matters could slowly, if you will, work their way up the food chain. And eventually those men that are over 10s or 50s would one day be great elders in Israel. And so Jethro sees this vision of God's people needing leadership. He knows Moses isn't going to do it by himself. He can't do it. It's impossible. So he suggests start breaking this up, getting men, selecting men that can do some of these jobs. A lot of times when we talk about a New Testament church, we read 1 Timothy, we read Titus, which are great examples of leaders, men. We've talked about elders and deacons and ministers and so forth. But this is a great text to go to to talk about if you want to be a great leader, you delegate. You try to find other people that can do certain jobs. Now, in uh, Timothy's example, Paul actually says they need to be tested. This is how they're tested. Moses actually selected men and said, hey, I'd like for you to lead in this area. And they did it. And from this point forward, even whenever they build the tabernacle, remember they replaced two guys in charge of building. That was their talent, their God-given talent. Strong churches, strong corporations, schools, businesses, whatever you say, strong groups are led by a handful of people that are really wise and strong and spiritual and so forth. But they also have people that work in various areas underneath them. It's very uh, difficult for any group to work well if there is one person that's in charge of everything. It's also very difficult to have the group that you're teaching or you're training to be micromanaged, you know, where you're just like, well, I'll put you in charge, but you better ask me before you do anything. That's not exactly what he's doing here. Moses has the, enough wisdom from Jethro here to say, I'm going to give you a charge over something. So let's pretend tonight that we're in this audience and Moses says to us, I need some guys to be in charge. Would you be willing to be in charge of tens, of, of fifties, of hundreds? Would you be willing to take that load? Now that's a lot of responsibility. But what would you say to Moses if he came to you and said, I need you to lead some people? Would you do it? Would you say, absolutely. You might want to know a little bit more about what you're doing. <laughs> what exactly am I talking about? Am I talking about being a judge over court cases? Am I just listening to people talk? Am I a counselor? Am I a teacher? That would depend upon each case, individual case. Moses perfects this by the time they get into the promised land. And he asks them, I not only need you to lead on the city gates and dealing with problems and such like that, I need every tribe to have a leader. I want one guy. When they go in and spy out the promised land, they pick one from each tribe. Moses will perfect this as he spends time, 40 years in the wilderness, getting men ready. Before they go before the mountain of God, or he goes up to do the, uh, receive the Ten Commandments, he did not go by himself. Who did Moses take with him? Joshua. Now Aaron is there. Aaron is a great leader, but he's a priest. And Moses says, Joshua, I need you to come with me. And Joshua is right there by, by Moses. He's his shadow all the way through every major event. He's a shadow to him. But also, Aaron had some shadows behind him. He had Nadab and Abihu, uh, Eleazar and Athamar, those four boys. They were his shadow. Each of the tribes that had major leaders, elders of each tribe. They had people behind them that were ready to step up and take the lead when they finished. And all of this comes because of Moses' leadership style that is taught to him by Jethro. I'm going to give you a great example tonight. It's very practical. Uh, tonight, um, Eric texted me about 4 o'clock. And he said, uh, how do we do Sunday night? What's the, sing the singing and all that stuff? I said, well, Sunday night's... We usually have a song and then a prayer or send people to do communion and then we do one more song and then I get up and then we have the invitation song. Yep, we're all familiar with the pattern. We've been doing it for a few weeks. But we don't have anybody to organize the Sunday night service. Tyler does a great job on Sunday morning, but Sunday nights we come in and you'll, if you'll notice Wednesday nights, if you think about it, how many times on Wednesday night have you seen me going over here to Chase and, hey, could you do a song? Could you do a prayer? Could you do a, you know, and it's great to get them involved, but wouldn't it be nice to know who's going to do that before they got here? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be great when you got here to know that, that Ray's not running around like a chicken with his head cut off? You know, wouldn't it be good to know, I know some of you sitting right here tonight would be willing to lead a song, wouldn't you? Or lead a prayer? Or do the invitation? 
It would be great to have somebody over that on Sunday nights. It would be great to do that on Wednesday nights, to have someone uh, that could help organize the service. That we just saw tonight. So Eric did a great job leading singing, but he didn't know until about 40 minutes before services that he was going to do it. And it's not because it's his job. He's got several things he needs to do. But usually I would try to grab somebody to do it. And I know Joe's done it a few times and other guys have helped with that. I've asked Ken to lead and so forth. But these are little things that we see regularly. And so what I want us to do is over the next few weeks, and we'll talk about this a couple more times, think about jobs that need to be done. Think about ministries that could be very successful if we just had someone to take a lead. Jethro is saying to Moses, I need you to get on this. I need you to find people that can do some of these jobs because there are a lot of jobs that need to be done. So let's, let's dream for just a minute, all right? Let's dream for just a minute. I, was, I put some on the screen back uh, the first or second Sunday night that we did this. What are some things that we really need to be doing? And I'm not saying that we're not doing it, but maybe there's not necessarily someone who's leading. What are some jobs that need to be done at the Summerdale Church of Christ? What are some ministries that we need to do? Anybody? Okay, outreach. We've got a lot of people in our community that need to be uh, reached. We've got events like the Blood Drive. Uh, some time ago, we did a, a Town and County Days event. We have fall festivals, things like that. But there are things we do here at our building. What are some things we could do out in our community to try to bring, bring people in? You ever thought about having an event to honor our firefighters? You know, we took our breakfast there yesterday. I do it every Saturday that we have breakfast. We take all of our leftovers down there, and they love it. So what about our firefighters? What about our teachers? What do we do for Somerdale School? What do we do for Snook? Do we have an official church representative that can help anytime they need something? Uh, if they need to unlock the building for an event to help watch the sound, because they do use our auditorium quite frequently. Do we have somebody that could set with them to, to help coach them and help them? Right now, nobody to do that. So that's a job, community outreach, working with different uh, organizations. We've got a, um, a literacy council here in Somerdale. We've got all kinds of, of local groups, chapters of people that would love to be engaged with us. We don't have anybody that uh, at, at other congregations I've been at, we've had members that were on the chamber or members that were in certain uh, civil groups and they could tell us if we needed uh, to, they need to use our building or they needed somebody to come in and speak or do the invocation. So it would be great to have somebody for community outreach. What's some other things we need to do as a church family? Let's just dream. What are some things? Barry and I have talked about prison ministry. That's something we need to do. We've got an opportunity to get in with the county uh, to be able to, to do regular ministry in Bay Manette. We're working on that, getting our paperwork and all that stuff ready. There are a lot of people that uh, are up there that are, uh, some of them aren't there for a long time, but they've got a little bit of time to try to get their lives right before they get back out into the world. And that's a great ministry opportunity to do jail ministry. Right now we do benevolence. Wayne does a great job of meeting with people that need food or uh, need uh, different financial help. Uh, and he, he does a great job doing that. Uh, we also have a great security team. I love the fact that I come in on Sunday and Wednesday, I know that we've got guys that are running security, and Buddy does a good job of organizing that. Uh, and so we've, we've got some men and some places to do some, some really good stuff. Uh, what else besides those things? What about the Iglesia de Cristo? Meets just right over here. They're meeting tonight, the Spanish church. They meet for class at 5, worship at 6. Do we have anybody that is a liaison between us and the Iglesia de Cristo? Is there anyone who is compassionate or at least has a, a, a desire or a zeal to help people that speak Spanish? We, that's a great ministry. It's right, it's right here. It's right here. Um, that would be a great thing to do. Ben's in charge of our building and grounds. Takes care of the things here. I know Mike has been helping him a little bit with that. But there's just, there is so much that needs to be done around here. Uh, little jobs that need to be performed. What else? Come on, dream with me. What are some ministries that it would be great for us to have? What about education? Who organized the education department? Who, who organizes the Bible classes here? How many, of you, how, many, how many years have we been members of this? Anybody here been a member of this congregation for 15 years or more? 
a few, 20 years, all right? Who orders the Bible class curriculum? Who ensures that we have teachers for every class? Anybody? Nobody knows? Nobody knows. Is there somebody that's specifically in charge of that? Not really. Ben, ben did that for many years. Uh, Christy actually gets some of the curriculum and so forth. Um, but it would be great to have somebody that, that led the education ministry. What else? We're dreaming here. Come on, give me some other things. It would be great. We could do full time. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. We're, we're we're very lucky to have a lot of snowbirds come in and out. Wouldn't it be great if we could organize with our Golden Agers, our rock and roller group, to have, when they're here, have events, uh, make sure that their needs are met. Do we know where they're staying? You know, how, how would you like it if you went and stayed somewhere for two or three months and the church family said, hey, we know where you're staying up here at the RV park or down at the beach, and we will help you anything you need. Just call us. Uh, giving them, like, mission, like Mike said, it's a mission field or we can help these men and women from different places, and then they go back to their home congregation. What happens when they get ready to officially retire? They might move to Somerdale, Alabama, as a result of our, our encouragement of them. Full-time mission. What about a visitation program? Who's in charge of the visitation? Who's in charge of uh, making sure that our widows and our widowers and um, young, older couples have the, the things that they need? Wouldn't it be nice to have somebody who could contact our widows and widows every week or every couple weeks, make sure if they have some kind of a need uh, that is met. Wouldn't it be great if we could have some kind of a program that people that visit regularly could be visited or called or cards could be sent to them? Our ladies do a great job of that on Monday morning, but uh, sending cards to people. But wouldn't that be neat? Have you, anybody ever been a part of a church that had a visitation program? You know, you, you had so many people underneath you. Maybe you had a deacon who uh, ensured that uh, these people visited these people throughout the year. Uh, we talk about Phone Tree and, and Group Me and all these different programs that are in our, um, uh, our phones to be able to get announcements to us. But back in my day, when I was growing up, we had in the back of the, bullet, or in the, back of the directory uh, the names of the deacons over like A through whatever letter, and you, that's how you checked on people. If that person was gone in your list, you as the deacon were supposed to call and check on them. Uh, that was how they did visitation. But that would be a great ministry, wouldn't it, to have a visitation ministry? Why don't we have a visitation ministry? Anybody? Because nobody's doing it. So who does the visitation for the church? The elders do, uh, ministers do, and we all do what we can when we have opportunities to do it. But it would be really good to have somebody that could help organize that. This is what Moses is doing at the, at the gate. He's saying, I can't do everything. I need help. And I need men who can help lead in these areas. It's kind of like a, a call, if you will, to ministry. And this is what we're trying to do with this leadership class, is for us to dream of things, pray about things that we need to do. And then when we look around this room, eventually... We're going to see leaders of those ministries and those things that need to be done. It gives us an opportunity to use our talents, but it also blesses the congregation and that there's some organization to it. Uh, if you've ever been at a, a place or worked at a place where nobody really knew what they were doing, uh, I, I've spent many times been at uh, like restaurants or at um, places like Walmart. I've been to, this has happened before to us at Home Goods. They say, well, can we get some help with this? Well, I don't know who to, tell, I don't know who to point you to. I don't know who to, well, who's in charge of this? Well, I guess me. You know, they don't even know what, what's supposed to be going on. So it would be great if somebody was the point man for those kinds of ministries. We're still dreaming. What are some other things be great we could do as a church? Don't worry. Just because you suggest it doesn't mean I'm going to volunteer you tonight, right? Volunteer you. What are some other things? Yeah, Wayne? Yeah. Right. 
right? Yeah. Well, yeah, Tuesday nights. That would be great. Go and visit people, sing songs, uh, be able to make sure if there's something at a, uh, a family needs or maybe a widow or a widower needs, we could take advantage of that. Uh, Eric and I were talking about uh, this week having a program once a quarter every three months on a Saturday morning that we all meet here at the building at 8 o'clock or whatever. We might get have breakfast together and then let's go. We come with our grubbies on, as my dad used to call it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. That would be great. I mean, think about the impact you make on people when you go and you serve and you sing or you lead. But wouldn't it be great if we had something like that? That'd be awesome. What else? We're still dreaming. Come on, guys. What are some other things would be great we could do as a congregation? Think about churches where you've been and ministries that they've done. I gave a list several months ago, but uh, let's keep thinking, keep dreaming. What else? What are college-age kids? You ever wonder about what happens when they get out of their home and go to college or they get a job? We've got some men in this congregation and women who have graduated high school. What do we do for our college age? Do we have any classes for our college-age kids? Do we have any uh, events for our college-age kids to kind of get them together? Uh, why don't we have that? There's nobody to lead it. Nobody has stepped forward to say, I think I'd like to do that. Um, Widows and widowers, like I said, there's always groups, young children ministry or teen ministry. It'd be great to have men that would help Eric in those departments. Uh, what else? Come on, we're dreaming. What are some other things the church should be doing? Children. Children's minister. Have someone in the congregation who's willing to organize the events for, say, pre-K through fifth grade. There are all kinds of stuff that you can do with those little ones. <clears throat> you can take them to the fire department. You can take them to the zoo. You can take them to, there's a rodeo coming in town. Boy, those kids would love to go to the rodeo. Stuff like that. Little, little activities for the children. Having devotionals. Why is it we do devotionals with the teens, but we don't do devotionals with the little kids? They would love that, too. Uh, one thing we did at a congregation, when school let out, you know, there's always a lock-in for the teenagers. Yay, school's out. Uh, we did it one year. <clears throat> the little kids said, we want to lock in. We're like, eh, I don't really want to. I have a hard enough time keeping up with 15, 16-year-old boys. But here we got these little kids that said, I don't know about that. And so our youth minister just thought outside the box. And he said, here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> we're going we're gonna to do it. We're going to do a lock-in. But your parents are, are able to stay. And I'm going to ask the teens to stay, too. And what we did was we set up little tents inside the fellowship hall. And so you had your little tent area where you could go in. And we played a movie on the, on the wall. And we woke them up with breakfast and uh, pancakes and all this stuff. That was my job, was to make breakfast the next morning. But we had lights dimmed but not off. And the kids sat around and played and had a great time. And then we had a moment where we said, okay, we're going to lay down for just a little bit. If you want to sleep, you can sleep. If you don't, that's okay. But we're going to dim the lights and have a little rest. And so all of us spread around that whole fellowship hall. And if you ask kids that are, you know, 15, 16, 17 years old. Now, what, what did they remember the most about their youth ministry? They'll say, sleeping in the fellowship hall that night with tents and sleeping bags. Uh, but all the kids, all the little ones were together. But there are things like that we could do for the little kids. What else? We're dreaming here. What are some other things we could do? Anybody? Yeah. Yes. Inner city? Yes. Yeah. Wouldn't it be neat if we had someone who could check up on our missionaries regularly and get emails? I think it would be neat to, to click open the bulletin or click open a, a, a Facebook and see in Guyana, we had 17 baptisms this week. We probably did. We don't know because we don't keep in contact regularly with the missionaries over there. But wouldn't it be great if we had a point man who could contact our missionaries, who could contact the, the children's homes that we support, who could spend time in conversation with Marco Toledo, who runs the Hispanic ministry, and, and give a regular update, maybe in the bulletin or online. These are the things that we are doing. We, we contribute every Sunday. We put money in that plate to help the work of the Lord, and we're doing some great stuff. But we don't always communicate about that stuff because it's, it's overwhelming to think about all the different work that we do. But if we had a point man who could check in with our missionaries, I mean, if we had a missionary overseas that we support and we find out his car broke down and he needs help, 
we would want to help them, but we don't know that information if we don't talk to them. Or maybe their child gets sick, or they're trying to add another room onto the church building. That would be great to have somebody that's a point man to reach out to our missions, and also stateside missions. We've got things here in our own area. In fact, I don't know if they still do it, but they used to do like a Tuesday night um, uh, class like for um, tutoring at the inner city in Mobile. Wouldn't it be great if we had a group of people that would load up on that night and go help with that event? There's, there's all kinds of stuff like that. We're dreaming here. What else would be great if we did as a church family? What are some ministries? Come on, guys. Okay, young adults. Having somebody that actually is the point man to help organize young adult devos, young adult trips. We did a couple of trips here just a few years ago. Um, the marriage retreat that we have going on, that's a, that would be a great thing. Somebody could actually take point on that and get the hotels and make sure that we, uh, we, we know exactly what time everybody's leaving and take care of the keys. Mike Joyner's been doing that the last two years, doing a great job with it. So that's, that's something. All of our local events, devotionals, we've been wanting to have a uh, singing in our backyard for some time. We're going to try to get the uh, young adults to come over and sing uh, at our house. So that would be great if we had somebody that was a point man over those kinds of things. What else? Let's keep dreaming. Amen. Our seniors ministry. Yeah, our seniors need to have somebody that is a point person. When the church met in the first century, the first thing, the first ministry was not building and grounds. Their first ministry was not youth ministry. Their first ministry was not the mission field. The first thing they did, it tells us, is they began to have be benevolent. They shared what they had. And in chapter 6, they said, we've got some widows that are being overlooked. The first men that were chosen to lead were men that could care for the widows. So our seniors need, need somebody, we need a point man that they can reach out to and say, hey, I need help. And you can have a whole list of people that can help with, you know, whether it's lawn care or electrical work or some of those things. We probably have men in the church that could do some of that stuff. It'd be great to have an organizer that could reach out to those uh, in that ministry. What else? Keep dreaming. There's much more. What's some other things would be great for us to do? Anybody, anybody? I mentioned the Wednesday night devos, uh, the Sunday night services. It'd be great to have an organizer for those kinds of things, right? What else? Think about places where you've been. Think about ministries that they've done. We don't have a church van right now. Who's in charge of transportation? Making sure the van has gas and making sure that the van has uh, good windshield wipers and that our kids are going to be safe. When we get that van, who's in charge of transportation? Wouldn't it be great to have a point man that could help make sure that the van is taken care of? Wouldn't that be great? Yep. Those are, those are little things. Uh, we talk about building and grounds, but wouldn't it be great if we had someone that was in charge of a work day that we could come up here and do certain things, take a list from the teachers, what we need, uh, be a liaison to the elders and say, here's some things we'd like to do on the second Saturday in August is we're all going to come up here and we're going to do certain things around the building. There's painting that needs to be done. There's stuff that needs to be done over in the fellowship hall. There's stuff that needs to be done in the youth room. Uh, little things. would be great if we had somebody that's a point man to do all that. Now, it gets overwhelming we go through all this list, doesn't it? Because we're sitting here going, man, that's a lot of jobs. Yeah, but I'm looking at a lot of men, too. I'm looking at a lot of faces of people that could help in these key areas. And the important thing is when we organize the work of the Lord, it does not have to be a, a deacon or an elder or a minister. All of us are supposed to use our talents. So we don't have to have the title to do great work. But we do need to be focused on what we can do. What can I do? If I wanted to be, if I had to have a job tonight, what would it be? What would I feel most passionate about? What would I be the most excited about? Uh, and then I take that and I, I do something with it. There are some men who are good at finances. Who, what about balancing the budget for the church? What about setting a, a yearly budget? Is there someone who could help take care of that? Uh, that's another job. So again, uh, hundreds of things we could list tonight of jobs that would be great to have, but it takes men to lead. And so what does Jethro say to Moses? Find some men, appoint them, and let them serve. And that's what we really want to do here is we, we, we love to dream. We love to have visions of all kinds of ideas. And I presented some of those to you. But what we really need to do is tonight we need to pray as Jesus asked his disciples to in John 4. That the fields are white to harvest. And we need to pray that God will empower some men to tend the fields. 
to reap the harvest. That's, that's our primary goal as a child of God is to serve him to the uttermost. And that includes things here. And I know we're busy. We've got stuff on our plates. We've got families and we've got our own work and stuff like that. But this may be the, the opportunity that we can finally serve God by using a talent that we already have and bless a whole bunch of people. So be praying about where would I like to serve? What would I like to do? Is my heart in education or in missions or ministry uh, that's uh, you know, overseas or stateside? Is, am I compassionate about children? Do I, do I see myself helping as in benevolence or one of these key areas? Be praying about that because there are a lot of jobs that need to be done and we're going to be calling on you as Moses did to try to lead in these particular ministries. Do you think of any others while I'm talking here? All right, well, dream about it, pray about it, and then as men of God, let's do it. And if you see something that needs to be done, make sure you talk to the elders about it. Say, wouldn't it be great if we had a ministry over this? Because I'm sure after tonight, you're probably going to go home and go, man, I forgot, I could have said such and such. So let's be in communication with our elders about those ministries. And then maybe likewise is important is to be, com be uh, full of zeal in those areas. We should get 110% behind it. Uh, how many of you have a child in the youth group right now? A few, all right? But are we excited about having a youth minister? Absolutely. We might have a kid in that youth group, but we're excited to have somebody to work with the youth. And the great thing Eric provides is he came, he has a wonderful wife who is passionate and excited about ministry too, but also uh, between the two of them, they've got some, some ideas that can bless the whole congregation, not just the youth. It's great to have somebody who can lead singing and, and so forth. Uh, but he, we have these men, sometimes we hire somebody to do a job, but there are a lot of jobs that we can do that would be a, uh, a burden remover for someone, including myself. And I know I have a tendency to try to go all in, and I am, I'm the type of person that will, I'll work until the job's done, but, um, and I'm really, I'm really struggling sometimes because, and maybe you're this way where if you give somebody a job, you wonder, can they do it as well as I think they should? And the answer is, as Moses is being told by Jethro is, just give them the job and let them try. You don't have to go, well, they're going to be perfect at it. They're never going to be perfect at it. So, um, so let's divide the work and let's uh, be successful in, in reaching people. I think that would be a great way for us to move forward as a church is for us to dream. Yeah, Tommy? Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. That'd be great. I think it'd be great to have that in the directory, uh, is to have our jobs, the things that we do. If somebody is a, a teacher, an educator, and you've got a kid that's struggling in math, maybe they're not a math tutor, but you could go to that teacher and say, hey, do you have somebody that you know that can help tutor my child in math? So having a group of people, men with certain talents. I'm not great with a lot of things, but there are some things I'm fairly good at, you know, master of none, but jack of all trades. And we had uh, one of our sisters here this morning that as she was leaving, she said, my husband and I are about to move to Robertsdale, and we need help moving. Do y'all have help with that? And we said, we do it all the time. Now, I'm not as young and spry as I used to be. I'm in my mid to late 40s now. But there are several people who have helped in, in, in those. Wouldn't it be great if we had an organizer, a man who could, we could turn to and say, hey, look, somebody needs this moved. Could you put together a crew of guys to help with that? Maybe even have a trailer. I've been at churches before that had... Uh, a list of men, or we actually bought one at Gulf Shores to use, but if uh, we had men with trailers and say, hey, could you have a pickup? <laughs> you know, could you help somebody on this Saturday? That'd be really neat. Now, we can't do it for everyone, or we'd be moving 24, it'd be, you know, two guys in a truck, but here we are. We have members that need things done. We're going to have widows that need to go to the nursing home and have their stuff put into storage. Those kinds of things. Wouldn't it be great if we had somebody that could do that? That would be wonderful. But yeah, it would be awesome if we could have a whole list of all of our jobs, the things that we're passionate about, things that we're uh, excited to do or talented to do, and then we can be called upon in those moments. That'd be great. All right. Well, that's just to kind of open our mind tonight. Uh, let's pray, and then we'll, we'll be dismissed. Father God, we praise you. We thank you for the blessings that you've given us. We thank you for 
your holy word that inspires and encourages us. We thank you for leadership like from men like Moses who listens to the wisdom of his father-in-law Jethro. And Father, we pray that you'll help us as a congregation to be ready to accept authority when it is delegated to us and be willing to move forward in a way that is positive for the whole church to grow. We pray that you will put within our hearts a desire to serve and that you will put within the congregation a, a passion and a desire to get behind our leaders. We thank you for these men in this room. I thank you for the work that they're doing already and for their presence and for their faithfulness, their attendance. And I thank you for what they're doing in their families as they're leading them as you would want us to lead. Pray, Father, you'll bless this church family, bless our elders, uh, bless our deacons, our teachers, uh, and each of us as we find a way to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you all for being here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Steve, Mike, and Tyler. If you'll meet with the elders just a minute back here.